when you fall, Jesus says, get up. Yeah. Yeah. He, he does not say, stay down there. I want to leave you alone for six months. I'm putting you on probation. He says, get up. I have paid the price. Yeah. If you will believe, no matter what the enemy is telling you in your head and in your heart, you've got to say, I know in whom I have believed. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses me from all sin. Have you ever wondered about those voices in your head? Is it God? Is it your conscience or something else? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Light exposing darkness. Everyone, welcome to LED Live. We are excited for you to join us today and we have a guest again in our program, Eric Wilson, who's been a guest in our show multiple times. Thank you for joining us, Eric. It's good to be here. You know, whenever I go out and speak, I always tell people, you know, it's important that if you're going to get a message that you get it from the right source. And so that's kind of what this topic uh, is about today, is getting messages from the right source. What are those sources? Amen. Where do people in this world get some of those messages? Sometimes it's very strange, and we're gonna talk about that today. So you were reminding us just prior to the show that there was a quote by the actress Sandra Bullock. Yes. You yes. have that with you? I do, I've got it with me. Um, and sort of uh, as a preface before I show that quote, a lot of people talk about being inspired. Mm -hmm. I mean, you hear musicians, you hear writers, authors, movie stars. They're like, man, that was an inspiration. That Christian was inspired. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't really stop to think, what does that mean, inspired? It means inspirited. Mm -hmm. Inspiration means a spirit was in you. It was put in you. Inspirited. Wow. Mm. And uh, we're not going to talk a whole lot on this one about the dark side. We're going to lay the foundation with the truth. But I want to show you this. This is a quote from uh, an actress, Sandra Bullock, and she said, when she's acting and she comes under this inspiration, this power, she says, it's almost like my conscience and my devil all in one. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to claim the devil is mine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. what do you mean by that? <laughs> and then she says, it's almost like I can read minds at this point, instinct, or intuition, or a sixth sense. That's like our gift as actors and actresses. Uh, so she's speaking for actors in general. Yeah. So I'm assuming because she said that, she's had conversations with other actors and they agree. Yes, that. yes. The, the easiest way for me to look at this is you go, okay, so what's the point? I mean, what's the difference about this, these voices? Well. Jesus said something in John chapter 6, verse 63. He said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit mm -hmm. and they are life. And then in John 14, verse 10 and 11, he said, the words I'm speaking unto you, it's not me speaking them. It's my Father that's inside of me. He's giving me the words and he's the one that's doing the work. Wow. All the miracles you're seeing, Mm -hmm. It's God in me doing those. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants for us. Amen. But yet the, the enemy wants the same thing. He wants to take God's throne. In Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, uh, there's something very powerful there that our Savior's told us. He said, when he was demanded by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, because they were expecting, mm -hmm. you know, a monarch in flaming, you know, robes and a fiery chariot and he was going to crush the Romans and but they didn't realize that Christ's kingdom began in humility. The second coming it will be in power. Hmm. But listen to what he said. When he was demanded by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, Jesus answered them and said, "Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. It's inside of you." And most of them didn't have a clue. They didn't get it. Mm. In, in John chapter 3, when Nicodemus came to Jesus that night, you know, when no one else was around, he was even asking about that. He wanted to find out about this kingdom because he saw Jesus doing all the things that the Hebrew Scriptures told mm -hmm. that the Messiah would do, but yet he was not taking the throne. He was not seeking recognition. 
and he was trying to understand, you know, this this how this was working. Mm-hmm. One of the things that that really caught my attention a couple of years ago, I was reading in the Gospels, and I was reading um, specifically when Jesus, right before Jesus had begun his ministry, and it said that John the Baptist came preaching repentance mm-hmm. and saying. Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Yep. And when I remember when I read that, because even growing up a Christian, when you talked about the kingdom of God, it was like the second coming. Mm-hmm. You know, that was just a picture that mm-hmm. most Christians have in their mind. Mm-hmm. And I'm reading, I'm like, this was 2,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. John the Baptist said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and then in my mind, I thought, yeah, but John wasn't God. He could have mm-hmm. been mistaken. Peter mm-hmm. thought, Jesus was coming in his day, he was mistaken. Mm -hmm. And then I read over another chapter or two, and Jesus was baptized, went into the wilderness, and was tempted of the devil, and he came back from the wilderness, and he said, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, John could be mistaken. Jesus was not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And I thought, God, that was 2,000 years ago. How could the kingdom be at hand? Mm -hmm. And the Lord just impressed me. He said, Eric, look up the word kingdom. Uh Hmm. So I looked the word up, and I've got the Hebrew definition. These are the Strong's Concordance numbers if you're looking, you know, with our audience. And I've also got the Greek definition. The Hebrew definition of kingdom is to have dominion, to rule, to reign as a king, to induct into royalty or to ascend the throne. Hmm. The Greek definition is royalty, to rule, to reign, a foundation of power or a sovereign king. Mm. The kingdom of God is at hand. The king, the foundation. You know, it talks about Jesus and it says he's the foundation stone, but it also says he's the headstone. Mm -hmm. He's the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. When you start a pyramid, it's got a cornerstone and it's got a capstone. Mm -hmm. Christ is like, I'm both. I'm Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. His kingdom began 2,000 years ago, and we are living in the days when we're going to see him take the crown. That's interesting that, like, the devil, he just counterfeits the things of God, and, you know, you see the pyramid on the dollar bill without the capstone on it, and it's almost like Satan saying, like, no, 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 I'm the, I'm that capstone. I'm the all eye that sees everything, but... Satan and, doesn't really have that that kind of power that God does is seize everything. So I think it's just another counterfeit of trying to be in the place of God. And that eye that you see over the, the pyramid on the dollar bill, that's the eye of Horus. Mm-hmm. It's Lucifer saying, I'm going to put my seat where God's throne is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get into that. I, I, mm-hmm. I don't want to go too far ahead. Uh. <laughs> Listen to this. We're going to look at the Old Testament first. This is in Micah chapter 5, and this is a beautiful prophecy. The Lord spoke through Micah, and he said, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler or king in Israel. Isn't that just like God, though, that he doesn't just say uh, he's going to come out of the best and and the biggest and the whatever. It's like... Even from the beginning, you see his fingerprint always taking the more humble of approach to it. Do you know what really catches my attention? Remember what Jesus said? Behold, the kingdom is within you. Mm-hmm. Do you know it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and chapter 6 and 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which you, are not of, which you have of God and you are not your own? It says our bodies are God's temple. Mm, wow. In Zechariah chapter 6, verse 13, it says, He will sit upon His throne and be a priest upon His throne. The temple of God was not just, okay, there's church and there's state. God's like, I'm both. Mm, yeah. I'm your priest and your king, and I have one throne. Mm. One throne. It says there, Out of thee, Bethlehem, shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel. Who's Israel? Mm. Us. God's people. Mm -hmm. He will be king in us. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is within us. And then it says, even him whose goings forth, whose springs have been from old, from everlasting, 
You know, Christ, it, it talks about that in Revelation. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. And in Revelation, he says, come unto me, you, all you that are thirsty, and I will give you the water of life. Mm -hmm. The words I'm speaking unto you are spirit and life. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the fountain from which comes the life of God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is also the Word of God. When we receive God's Word, we are receiving the Spirit of God and the power of God mm -hmm. into our own lives. Yeah, you know, I, I can't help but wonder as I listen to some of the things that you're saying that there's a, I guess, a modern um, movement or interpretation in Christianity that's a very kingdom now um, interpretation. And it's very physical manifestation, mm -hmm. you know, very earthly. Like, yeah, God's going God's gonna to come down and set up his kingdom here on earth. And, and he is at some point. But it doesn't do God a whole lot of good to come and set his kingdom up on earth if his subjects aren't. Subject unto him. Subject to his kingdom. <laughs> Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. So good point. first he has to have citizens mm -hmm. before he can have, Amen. you know, uh, an earthly kingdom that is set up here. A, that is a very good point. So, that being the most important part, you know, our conversion is necessary first. Otherwise, the internal there's has no kingdom. To, the right? internal has well, to I happen mean, before the external. Here. I mean, yes, there's a kingdom in the sense that God is still ruler of everything and, and all that, but He wouldn't have, you know, subjects to be a part of His kingdom if we weren't. Um, That's right. Hmm. So, Micah, and I'm glad you brought that out because that's the. We're going to show something here in a minute that ties it in with what he just said. Um, the inside has to be one before the outside can be fixed. Mm -hmm. Christ has to have his throne. Listen to what it says in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of a man that he should repent or change his mind. Mm -hmm. For hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? That one promise, that's the whole gospel. God said, I'll save you. Right. Do you believe him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had people call me, and I've been there myself, where my sins were so overwhelming that I thought, the, the enemy was whispering to me, telling me, you've gone too far. You've done this too many times. God cannot save you. You've, you've grieved the Holy Spirit away. It's lies. Mm -hmm. It's lies. Mm -hmm. and I read a statement um, from a sister in Christ, and she said something that really encouraged me. She said, we can do nothing more to dishonor God than by doubting that He will save us. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because He said He would. Mm -hmm. right, right. And He can't lie. Right. He's not lied to His That's word. Now, if you go over one more chapter in uh, Numbers chapter 24, this was where the children of Israel were about to go into the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And right on the verge of going into Canaan, this one king, Balak, I think is how you pronounce his name, um, he was a pagan, and he was really nervous about a million and a half Israelites come. That would be, if we had a million and a half people crossing our border from Canada, we'd be like, this is a problem. Yeah. Or from Mexico, I mean, you'd be like, a million and a half is a lot of people. Balak said, I got to do something about this. And he heard that there was a, quote, prophet, a seer, somebody that had supernatural power. So he called for Balaam, and he offered him a lot of money. Now, this man was God's prophet, but the money was a lot of money. And Balak told him, said, I'll give you all this wealth. I just need you to come and curse these Israelites so that they can't prosper, so they, they will not be able to overcome. And Balaam Balaam got there, and every time he opened his mouth to curse, God would give a word, and he would speak through Balaam and bless them. Wow. So every time he was supposed to curse them, they got stronger mm -hmm. because he was blessing them. Mm -hmm. And finally, finally, Balak got so mad, he said, just shut up. Don't yeah. say anything else, because yeah. every time you open your mouth, they're getting you know stronger. But listen to what Balaam said during one of these prophecies. It says, Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in their tents according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he said, Israel's king shall be higher than Agag, 
and his kingdom shall be exalted. For there shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Mm -hmm. Do you know it's funny because it calls Christ, this king, mm -hmm. a star. Mm -hmm. right. Well, isn't, wasn't Lucifer like a falling star? I beheld mm -hmm. Lucifer as a star fall mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. lightning from heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Malachi chapter 4, it talks about Christ and He's called the Son of Righteousness. Our sun is the only star you can see during the daytime, mm -hmm. normally. Mm -hmm. And then it says, For out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remains of the city. And Israel, which is who he lives in, shall do valiantly. Mm -hmm. When I read that, I was like, he shall have dominion. Mm -hmm. All right, wait a minute. You know Romans chapter 6 says that sin does not have dominion over us? Mm -hmm. If Christ comes in and takes the throne, sin loses dominion. It means it cannot control you anymore. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a king reigning. And there's another name for Jesus that's used all throughout the Scripture. He's called the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse 1 through 7, He said, If you abide in me, and I am the word of God, and if my words which are spirit and life abide in you, you shall you ask what you fruit. will, and you'll bear much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And we can't bear fruit without Him, except yeah. we abide in the vine. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the word of God. So it's us abiding in God's word and God's word living and dwelling and reigning within us that makes us more than conquerors. Mm. This is a literal kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I want to show you, um, it's neat because these Old Testament prophets talked about this Messiah, this king that was going to come. Listen to what it says in the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 49. This is when um, Jacob was blessing the 12 tribes, his 12 sons. Listen to what he says here. This is Genesis 49, verse 8 through 11. It says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise, for thy hand shall be upon the neck of thine enemies. Now, Judah is where Jesus came from. Mm -hmm. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. This prophesies that the Messiah, the king, his hand will be on the neck of his enemies. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Do you know, we have got to live that way. Yeah. We, are not, we have not been given a little 12-inch piece of ground and God said, okay, I saved you. Now just stand there and don't let anything knock you off that little 12-inch one, one piece of ground. Mm -hmm. God said, all the world is yours. Mm -hmm. I took the dominion back. Mm -hmm. Go take the world. Go set the captives free. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you know what Jesus said? The gates of hell will not prevail against us. Mm -hmm. I mean, gates don't attack people. People attack gates. Yeah. So when you see somebody in bondage, it's mm -hmm. our job to go after them, mm -hmm. to storm the gates in prayer. It doesn't, I'm not talking about physically. <laughs> yeah. Jude is also the first one listed in Revelation chapter 7 of the tribes when, they're, when it's talking about the 144,000. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's the first one? Yeah, it says Read here, that. it's in Revelation uh, chapter 7, I'll start in verse 4. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Starts in verse 5, of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Oh, wow. And then is Reuben, then is Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, and so on. And there's one tribe missing, and if you... I don't Dan's know missing? I've, yeah, Dan's yeah. missing. Yeah, the tribe of Dan. I don't know if I've even brought this out on the show, but um, if you take all the meanings of their names and you string them together in order, that actually makes a little paragraph. Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of an mm -hmm. interesting thing. Okay, well, maybe ne that, maybe that's, next that's time we get together, that bring that. Because I've, I've seen other places where it would go through a lineage, and mm -hmm. when you looked at the original mm -hmm. names, what they meant, it was like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really neat. That well, would, I would like to see that. the story that. of salvation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he says here that Judah and the king that will come out of him, his hand will be upon the neck of, of his enemies. And then he says, thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Do you know what's amazing? What were 
the angels called that fell before they fell? Cherub. Sons of God. Oh, right. Mm. Right. Isn't it funny that here the Son of God, mm -hmm. he says, your father's children are going to bow before you. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Peter says at the name of Jesus, I think it's Peter, it's either Peter or Paul, it says at the name of Jesus, every, every knee, knee shall bow down. and every tongue shall confess. Mm -hmm. Do you know what's amazing? If Christ is in us, everything that is his, he's given to us. Mm -hmm. If we are his bride mm -hmm. and we have become one with him, every promise that was made to him is ours. Mm -hmm. That means we don't have to fear. Mm -hmm. We don't have to we're not living here like a weak, helpless, impotent Christians and, oh, the devil's the God of this world. He's not. He was mm -hmm. before Calvary, mm -hmm. but after Calvary, he's cast down. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on, it says, for the scepter, and that's, you know, the ruling rod that a king would hold. Mm -hmm. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from be between his feet until Shiloh come. The word Shiloh in Hebrew means the peace giver. Mm -hmm. Do you know Ephesians says that he is our peace? Mm -hmm. And remember Melchizedek? The priest, Christ is the high priest yeah. after the order of King Melchizedek. Of Salem. Mm -hmm. Salem meaning peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Being interpreted king of peace mm -hmm. and king of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. That I get excited about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this is neat. When I saw this, I was like so excited. Listen to this until Shiloh come, and it says, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Do you remember when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can go back and read it in the gospel. I think it's in the gospel of John. And it talks about that after he raised Lazarus from the dead, the people swarmed. They were just thousands of them around Jesus. And do you know what the Pharisees said? Mm -hmm. Do you not see what's happening? The whole world has gone after him. Mm. Exactly what that says. That's the text that I was going to bring up. Hmm. T what? Mm. Tell me. The one you just said. That's in. Uh, it's in John chapter twelve. But I was. I was bringing. I was going to wait until the end. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. No, <laughs> well, about it. no. T tell me. Well, the only reason I was. The only reason I was going to bring it up mm. is is I'm thinking down the road to part two, because I just read this this morning. And when I read it, I was like, hmm, that kind of like clicked something in my head. Um, it says, therefore, the people who were with him, this is in John 12, 17, um, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, you see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Hallelujah. And I read that text and I was like, this is amazing because if you look at um, Revelation chapter 13, it says the whole world wanders oh, after the beast. Yeah. It's just another way that Satan is counterfeiting. I didn't even think of that. You know, the work of Christ. Now it says wondered, and this says um, is it says the whole world has gone after him. But so, and a lot of people will misread Revelation 13 and say the whole world wandered after the beast. That's not what it says. This is wondered, you know, they're, like it's like they're in awe and amazement. Yeah. They're they're taken in by mm -hmm. this power, and it's kind of the same thing here. You know, it's like the whole world has gone after, and they're amazed by Jesus. And mm -hmm. and um, so anyway, I think it's a, a fascinating that, connection no, that they a, said that. And then it says something that is really striking. It says, "Binding his foal unto the vine." Mm -hmm. Christ said, "I am the vine, yeah. and you yeah. are the yeah. branches." Yeah. It says, binding his foal. That means uh, the, yeah, the cult of a donkey mm. under the vine and his donkey's cult under the choice vine. Mm. He shall wash his garments in wine. That means the, the juice of grapes, mm -hmm. unfermented. Mm. <laughs> and his clothes in the blood of grapes. This was all the way back in Genesis, wow. speaking about what would happen when the Messiah came. Mm -hmm. mm. Now listen to what happened when he came. And this is taken from Matthew 21, Mark chapter 11, and John chapter 12. Uh, oh, I want to make sure I didn't like miss something. Can you go back? Like, oh, yes, yes. Break it down. Is it talking about 
his garments being washed in blood is a symbolic or something like well it's like when he comes back it says he's riding on a white horse and it says he has on a vesture as if it's been dipped, dipped in, in blood, blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's because of what he went through for us and he says drink of this juice it's my blood yes okay. blood. yes mm -hmm. yeah i just want to make sure i was getting what was being said you know there. it's funny because like in isaiah chapter one it says um Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Mm. How does God make my red stains white? By washing it in blood. blood. Mm -hmm. That does not even make sense. Mm -hmm. But it's mm -hmm. amazing because even, even today, you ask any woman what's the hardest stain to get rid of, it's red. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's in Revelation 7 as well. And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, wow. wow. That's Revelation 7? Mm -hmm. Wow. The 144,000? It's the same chapter, yeah. The same chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 144,000. Mm -hmm. So when it says he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes, Isaiah 53 says he took our personal sins, they were laid on Him. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not simply say, God's got a, a law, whoever sins dies, I'll pay the penalty. He didn't just simply pay the penalty. God put our personal iniquities and transgressions and sins on Him. Mm -hmm. And do you know that He felt the guilt of what we've done every single time we've ever sinned? He felt the guilt as if he had done it. Intellectually, he knew, I didn't do that. Yeah. But his heart said, you did. Mm -hmm. He was, I cannot imagine what that was. And he felt that for the that's entire what, human race. Well, that's what I mean, yeah. yeah, imagine if you, you stood up and said, okay, I'll take his penalty for the speeding ticket. That's a lot different than saying, I'll take his penalty for the rape and the murder charge. And feel the guilt as if I did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine now everybody's sin of everything being on one person, man. That's just, mm -hmm. that's got to kill you. Yeah. I mean, it's what, it was so intense. The Bible said this, that he sweat great drops of blood. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That, in that intensity. And I, and I didn't, I didn't make this connection until recently. But in the book of, I think it's James, it's either James or Hebrews, it says, I think it's James, that um, you have not yet resisted unto That's blood. Right. That's right. And I'm thinking, you know, like Jesus resisted sin unto blood. Amen. And the anguish that he went through, the, the, the heartache, the, the resistance. And it's like, we haven't gone that far. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't remember seeing a, a, a scientific experiment one time that talked about that sweating blood and like having an water. Phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, like like it's actually, um, I mean, this crazy, incredible, painful experience, but the fact that your body could do that and produce water and blood out your pores is like mm. intense. You know, I'm glad that Keith brought that up though, because you know, there's a verse in Romans chapter six, verse 10 and 11. It says, in that he died, he died unto sin once. Him dying was not simply paying the penalty. No. He had Eric's adultery. He had Eric's blasphemy. He had Eric's alcoholism. He had Eric's cursing and swearing. Eric's watching bad movies. Mm -hmm. He had those and he looked at himself and he was like, he had the feeling of what it felt like when I wanted to do it. Yeah. And he said, by faith in my Father's Word, I choose to die rather than to yield to Eric Wilson's sin. Wow. wow. And then it says in the next verse, Romans 6, 11, it says, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Amen. I think I know why I mixed those up. Because in James it says, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Where's the other one? So the other one is in Hebrews. It's in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. It says, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, oh, wow. striving against sin. Okay. So in one place it's telling us, you know, uh, resist the devil, mm -hmm. and he will flee from you, right? Well, Jesus resisted the devil. Mm -hmm. How did he resist the devil? With wow. the word of God. Yeah. Yeah, with the word Amen. of God. Amen. Right? 
and and even in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he is sweating those great drops of blood, he is having to rely on the Word of God to make it through that experience. Because if he doesn't rely on the Word of God, mm-hmm. he's not going to make it through. And that's why when he was on the cross, I mean, he uttered words that he himself had read from Psalms, you know, like, my mm-hmm. God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's he's... He's standing on the word of God, Amen. knowing even though my body doesn't, you know, like, like my mind is fighting against me, but I know this is real. And he's quoting scripture all the way to the end. I mean, it was and you know, that's what every one of us are going to have to do yeah. right now, living in the days that we're living in. When you fall, Jesus says, get up. Yeah. He, he does not say, stay down there. I want to leave you alone for six months. I'm putting you on probation. He says, get up. I have paid the price. If you will believe, Mm -hmm. no matter what the enemy is telling you in your head Mm -hmm. and in your heart, Mm -hmm. you've got to say, I know in whom I have believed. Mm -hmm. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses me from all sin. I think there's a difference between somebody who is stumbling and falling Mm -hmm. and literally, you know, holding on to the coat of of Jesus saying, you know, like, I'm not going to let you go until you you fix this, right? And, and you see in our world today, I mean, there are people that are just full on whatever, I'm a sinner, and I'm going to embrace that. Yeah. And I'm going to just yeah. like go for it. I think that, that even though both are stumbling and falling, it's like the motive of the person that's like, well, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to celebrate person, this. Yeah, one person's yeah. happy and content to be where they're at. The other lady. person is but, like, I've yeah. fallen, but I, I want out of here. I want yeah. freedom. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go on here. Um we're going to look at where this was fulfilled when Jesus came. And we, we talked about this in Matthew 21, Mark 11, and John 12. It says, And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, in the path or the road. And others cut down branches from the palm trees and strawed them in the way or the road. Can you imagine back then, clothing was expensive. Mm-hmm. You go down and you buy the most expensive wedding gown for your wife. You know, mm-hmm. it's your first getting married and it it is a thousand dollars and somebody's coming by and you go, Oh, it's a muddy road. And you throw that thousand dollar garment down on the road for them to walk on. Mm -hmm. That's what the people were doing. They were saying our righteousness is nothing. Now this is right before he goes to Calvary, right? Yes. I mean, days, does, does the Bible even say that? Is it days? Is it it that weekend? weekend? Well, this was the last, yeah, this was the last visit. Yeah. Okay. I mean, isn't that isn't that amazing that we can turn so fast? Yeah. I mean, that that that's an alarming thought. Just knowing, like, human nature, there's mm-hmm. there's darkness in there that when, can flip real fast. When we get to the second part of this series, it's going to show why mm-hmm. that happened. Mm-hmm. I'm always reminded of the Israelites the same way. Like, yeah. Waters are parted. You're walking on dry land. The enemy gets destroyed, and Moses disappears for a couple of days, and they're worshiping. Calf, you know. Have you ever right. have you ever found yourself doing? I found myself yeah. doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah. God give me an unbelievable victory, a blessing, and then all of a sudden I find myself right back falling into the same pit that I've fallen into before, whatever yeah. it is. That's why it's a daily mm. coming back to God and daily connecting and reconnecting with Him every single day. There's never a I got this, you know, and then it's like yeah. the devil's just gonna wait for that moment where you think you you're fine, and then he's gonna trip you right back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if we do what Jesus said and we abide, mm-hmm. we abide. So that's what I'm, I'm like, Lord, you've grafted me in. I'm holding on to you. Mm-hmm. Hold me. Yeah. There's no pride in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like what you're saying is it's almost like he's waiting for us to get to that prideful moment mm-hmm. where he is. Mm-hmm. And then he just takes the rug right out from under you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It says, And the multitude that went before Jesus and those that followed after cried, saying, Hosanna in the Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. Wow. They called him the Son of David because God had prophesied to David, You're going to have a son, mm-hmm. and his throne will never cease. His yeah. kingdom will never end. Now, This is where it gets interesting. So Jesus is there preaching, and you see this all through the Gospels. And he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and yet do not those things which I say? Mm. 
Do you remember when Jesus came? Well, I don't want to get ahead. Do you remember when he, when the wise men came and they were looking? They said, where is he that is born yeah, king, of the Jews. king of the Jews? Mm -hmm. Jesus is there. They're calling him son of David. You know, they know who he is. Mm -hmm. He says, why are you calling me Lord? The word Lord in Hebrew is Adonai. It means sovereign king. In Greek, it interprets as master or king, ruler. He said, why do you call me your king, but yet you won't obey me? Mm. I, we could probably bring that a little closer to home. Why are we called Christians, yet we in, don't act like it? Yeah. Oh, Talk about taking God's name in vain. That's yeah. it. Call yeah. yourself a Christian and live like the devil. Yeah. Right. Can I go to that movie? Right. That PG, my wife was talking to me this past week and she said a friend of hers had gotten together. This was back 10 years ago. And they said, we want to watch one of those old movies we watched when we were younger. And it was like Pretty in Pink or something. Mm. She said they got through like 30 minutes of it and had to cut it off yeah. because they were using unbelievable bad language and blaspheming God. Mm -hmm. It's a PG. Yeah. So we call ourselves Christian, but yet we're doing things that Christ, it would make him throw up. Now, fast forward to the story. Jesus gets to the very end, that entrance into Jerusalem, and they come and they take him, the Pharisees do, and they get him in night, which they were not supposed to do. You were not supposed to have a trial at nighttime. Mm -hmm. That was against Hebrew law mm -hmm. and God's law. Mm -hmm. And they bring him to Pilate, and Pilate's Roman. He's pagan, but he, he has no interest in putting Jesus to death. He knows just by looking at him, this is a just man. And then God, because Christ wanted to save Pilate so bad, God sends a dream to his wife. And his wife comes out and she's like, don't have anything to do with this just man. I've suffered many things in a dream, you know, because of him. And Pilate, you know, is, is bringing Jesus there before the people. And he's asking, you know, what has he done wrong? Why are you wanting to kill him? Well, because he said, you know, he's a king. In Luke chapter 19, verse 14, it actually talks about what the people would say. And they said, we will not have this man reign over us. Mm -hmm. He came to be our king. And they said, we don't want, we don't want him. I got to bring this up before you move on. There. There's a really interesting thing because you brought out how the Holy Spirit was speaking to Pilate's wife, right? Mm -hmm. And um, actually, all three of the Godhead were trying to reach Pilate because Remember when it was asked to, uh, of Pilate, um, you know, I, or Pilate says, I have the power to basically make that yes. decision. And Jesus says, no, the only power that you have is what my father gives to you, right? Amen. So not only is Jesus standing before him, but he's also saying God has allowed you this position and the Holy Spirit is, is speaking through his that. wife. Yeah, and it's like yeah. all three of the Godhead were right there trying to win Pilate and Pilate made those wrong choices. He condemned an innocent man that he even himself said he was innocent. That's right. I think about it too. You said it that the Holy Spirit came to his wife, not him. Because imagine, you know, we could have a dream and be like, whatever. But if your wife tells you something, are you going to go against what she says? Are you going to be sleeping on the couch? You know? Yeah. yeah. He was like, I better not. You know, like a lot of times I've learned over the years to listen to my wife. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm she'll, learning that. she'll come yeah. up with things and I'll, and you know, first reaction be like, what? That's so different. But then yeah. it's like, you know, they, they do have a special gift that I believe God has given to them that, mm -hmm. that uh, you know. But also, you know, to keep peace and stuff. That's right. You don't want to, like, <laughs> right. go against her wishes. In Luke 23, verse 1 through 3, it says, And the whole multitude of the Jewish leaders arose, and they led him to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute or taxes to Caesar saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Most Christians don't realize what the word Christ means. The word Christ actually means the anointed. So he claimed that he was anointed king. Herod was not anointed by God. He got in there through subtle you know, bribes and paying mm -hmm. people off. So Herod, and he wasn't even fully Jew. So he wasn't supposed to be on the throne. When he first found the wise men come and they were asking the priest, where is this king that, you know, was to come? Herod was like, what are they, what are they talking about? And the Pharisees told him, said, well, all the way back in Genesis, there was a prophecy that a king would come that would rule forever. And Herod was like, 
I'm not ready to step down off the throne. Mm. Do you know I have found myself in that position? Mm. And I'll give you an example with food. Mm. Yeah. God's like, who are you going to let have the throne of your heart? Mm. And there's been times where I've allowed Christ to take that, and there's other times I'm like, no, 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 I got this. I got mm. this. Mm. That part of my life is mine. Maybe it's television. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's books that you're reading. Are you going to allow him? Are we going to allow him to have the throne and reign as king? Mm -hmm. This part is really intriguing. It said, Then Pilate entered in to the judgment hall again, and he called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And if you look that word Jews up, it actually is king of Judah. It wasn't the king of the Jews. It was the king of Judah, the one that Genesis 49 talked about. So, you, so you're saying that Pilate was at least to some degree aware of the idea of a Messiah and he's claiming to be the Messiah or is he just saying the, the king over the actual Jewish nation? He was saying the king over... That's who the Pharisees were telling Pilate. He claims to be king over Judah, which means Herod shouldn't be here. God, and they're so. doing that because if there's an insurrection yeah. over who's supposed to be, even yeah. Herod versus Jesus, that, that causes a whole world of mess for Pilate to have to clean up. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want anything to do. He wants things just to go smooth. Mm -hmm. Because if there's insurrection, then he gets called back to Rome and he's like, what's going on? Why are you not keeping everything in, in mm -hmm. order? Mm -hmm. So he wants to keep peace, mm -hmm. but he also doesn't want to condemn this man that he knows I mean, you could look at like Barabbas. They bring Barabbas out and he's spitting and cursing and fighting and yelling and the two thieves that were crucified with Jesus. And Jesus is not any of that. Yeah. And Pilate is a little, I think he was, he knew I'm dealing with something here supernatural. I wonder if Barabbas is going to be in heaven. I wonder if yeah, he changed his heart. Yeah, Man. Crazy. You know what I mean? Like he sees Jesus get crucified and he got let go and that guy yeah. got put on the cross instead of him. I don't know if it's like, like the down the road, you know, made I, that him think would, about, you know, man, this guy took my my punishment, you know. That's yeah, deep. crazy. That crazy would. So Jesus answered Pilate, and he said, What thou sayest, that I am, a king. And for this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. And that hit me. He said, I came to bear witness to the truth. What is truth? Jesus. Well, I know the the truth truth in the Pilate actually asked mm -hmm. that question. What is truth? Mm -hmm. John chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus mm -hmm. answers. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Mm -hmm. Thy word mm -hmm. is truth. Mm -hmm. The word truth in Greek means unfailing verity. God promised something all the way back in Genesis 5,000 or 4,000 years ago, and Jesus is standing there saying, God promised it. I'm the fulfillment of that promise. Mm -hmm. I'm bearing witness to the truth of God, to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I am a king. I am the truth. Mm -hmm. I am the fulfillment of the prophecy. Of the Word of true. God. Wow. That's right. Mm -hmm. And He is the Word. In John 19, verse 1 through 4, it says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, you know, with a whip. Mm -hmm. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Mm. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto the Jewish leaders, Behold, I bring him forth to you so that you may know that I find no fault in him. Mm. Jesus said, I came to bear witness to the truth. You know that all the way back in Leviticus, God had told the, the Jewish people, I called my son out of Egypt. You're my son. I called Israel out of Egypt. You're mm -hmm. my firstborn, he says in the Old Testament, to Israel. Mm -hmm. That's speaking to us. Mm -hmm. You're my firstborn. And then he told them, be holy because I'm holy. Mm -hmm. And people go, well, I'm trying. He didn't tell you to try. Mm -hmm. He said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. There was no trying involved with mm -hmm. let there be Yep. light, yep. and there was. Yep. There's power in the Word. He Amen. spoke it, therefore it happens. So then, oh, yeah, go ahead. Just saying, it's, it's fascinating that, you know, if you look at this for, for what it is, the, um, the state had no problem. That's right. The state recognized, you know, it, he's innocent. Wow. 
Uh, the church is the one that found them at fault. <laughs> that's that's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. We're going to revisit that. Yep. Yeah. I know. I yeah. was just thinking about that. We're coming it's around to that. It's be but the it's, it's the church special. controlling the state yeah. that and that's where you, yeah. That yeah. puts Christ to death in his saints. I find it really interesting and fascinating that here, you know, Pilate asks him what is truth, and then basically they put this crown of thorns on him, they beat him, and then right after that sentence, he says, I find no fault in this man. Mm. Like, you beat him? <laughs> yeah, because they, they prided themselves on being the, the judges of yeah. right and wrong and all of that, and here he clearly is acting outside of that realm. Yeah even just beating somebody that he didn't think deserved it, but he did it for the yeah. people of the Jewish nation. So they would go maybe, like, oh, you know, man. ah, okay, they beat yeah. him up. Okay, we're good now, you know. Because if you look at Paul, you know, whenever he said, I'm a Roman, the Romans got real nervous. And yeah, like, oh, that's right. That's, that's right. a good point. Don't, don't touch that guy. I forgot right. about that. That's right. You know, but Jesus are like, you know, mm -hmm. the pressure was too great. Mm -hmm. Do you know, it's funny because Pilate said that three times find no fault in. Three times he said that. Three times. That's important. Jesus was showing the Word of God cannot fail. God promised a man can live without sin. God promised, you know, all these promises, Jesus was like, I'm that promise. I'm showing you that God's Word will do what it says it'll do. He overcame by faith in God's Word, like you said. We can overcome by faith. God said, I cannot sin. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it says that in 1 John chapter 3? It says, He that is born of God does not commit sin, for God's seed, which is His Word, remains in him, and he cannot sin, for he's born of God. Mm -hmm. And people go, yeah, but that, that can't be true. Well, why? Well, because I sinned last night. Well, God's not asking you about last night. He's asking you, how can you sin today knowing that God's Word is true? Mm -hmm. Do you know that 1 John chapter 3 also says, Beloved, we are the sons of God. It says that we, the sons of God, we were begotten with Christ when He was resurrected from the dead. Mm -hmm. So now He's just saying, are you willing to believe that? Are you willing to believe that you are a son of God or a daughter of God? Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes, sir. What about if, because you were saying something about Pilate, he had the control of that and, you know, uh, got the Father... Son, the Holy Spirit, he was, you know, talking to him, you know, like, hey, this is my child, don't do it, or something like that. What about the prophecies? If he said, you know what, he's not going to die, how are the, the, pro uh, the prophecies of the Old Testament? It's going to be like, okay, what if Pilate said, you know what, Jesus is not going to die mm -hmm. in crucifixion? Do you think? God had a different way to how to pay our sins? The, well, the sins had to be paid for by Christ dying. And yeah. this, I've heard a couple of or people talk about this. Terrible debt. You know, I don't I've, know. I've heard a couple of people talk about this. You remember when Isaac, when Abraham was told to take Isaac up on the mountain and offer him as a burnt You're offering? Right, yeah. Isaac laid down. Yeah. He said, Father, whatever mm -hmm. the Lord has told you to do, he laid down. Mm -hmm. When Christ was going to the cross, he laid down. If something, and this is just my opinion, okay? Yeah. If something had happened, if Pilate had had a conversion, what if the entire Jewish nation had had a conversion and accepted him? You know what Jesus would have done? I believe. I think he would have went into the temple and he would have laid down on the altar and he would have told the high priest, I want you to kill me. I'm laying my life down for you all. Can you imagine what that would have done to the high priest to go, how do I kill somebody that I love? I, I think Converse. also it's a demonstration of the end conclusion of sin. Like, like I, I always kind of say, well, you know, Satan is a student of the Bible. He knows what's going to go on. How did he let this play out in the way? Because he understands the things of God the most, right? So if he understands like he was the closest to God, he understood what this mission was. That's how he's able to thwart it and, and, and change and everything. But I think that this is the natural end result of sin, that you would condemn an innocent man to die. Yeah. All of us would probably do that if it was playing out in a long enough amount of time. And so I think that this, he had to let them take a man who did not deserve that punishment, and bam. 
Do you know what's interesting? And Keith, you may remember, or one of you guys may remember, there's a place in the New Testament where Paul says, if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Mm-hmm. Herod, Pilate, even Satan. See, but it's just crazy to me that that, that that would be the case because he watched the Jews put the lamb on the altar so many years in a row. And, and I, you know, when he, he was no doubt around when John said, behold, here comes the son of, uh, of wow, God, that yeah. the lamb that takes away the do, sins, do right? You know what's interesting though? Spiritual things are only spiritually discerned. Satan did not have the Spirit of God, so he could see things, but it was like it was not as Making clear sense. as what it is to us that mm. have the Spirit of God mm. in us. Mm. Yeah, the Holy Spirit was, I mean, he, he knows the Bible, you know, from the beginning to the end, but, mm. you know, the inspiration is for, through the Holy Spirit. Mm. If we don't have the Holy Spirit, I mean, we it's just, just a dead letter. wisdom, does mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. But no inspiration mm-hmm. through the Spirit. That's why it's important to pray when you read the Bible. Amen. Amen. Show, me, Amen. show me what you want to, me to see, Lord. Listen to this part. This is what's interesting. The very next thing that that happened, it says, Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said something to him, Behold the man. Mm. Do you know that's what the name Adam was? Mm. It means Rudy in flesh, but it also means Adam. It was the first man. Mm. Pilate says, Behold the man. And I hear people, and I know they don't know any better, but I hear people on television shows, they'll say, you're the man. There's only one. That's Christ. He is the man. Mm -hmm. There's no human that can claim that. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because in 1 Corinthians 15, 45, it says the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, but the last Adam, a quickening, a life-giving spirit. Mm -hmm. Christ is the second or the last Adam. He took Adam's place as the head of the human race. Mm-hmm. Adam was had dominion over the world. Remember in Genesis? Mm-hmm. He, God gave him dominion of the entire planet. Every animal, every, everything obeyed him. Even the plants obeyed him. I wonder if he would have been like king of the earth or something. Like well, he would like have been prin- David, prince, yeah, prince him, of this yeah, world. His father's the him. king. He would have been the prince. Mm-hmm. That's why Satan said, I'm the prince of the world. Mm-hmm. But do you know what? Christ came back and he said, I'm here to take back what Adam lost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And this right here, this is it. This is from a, a little paper, a periodical that was written back in 1898. It's uh, called Youth Instructor, July 7. Listen to what it says. Study the scriptures. Know that Christ is to be set forth among you. That means within you. And that all that was lost in Adam, the cross of Christ, fully restores to every believing soul. When you see the disciples after Pentecost, they turned the world upside down. Mm -hmm. They healed the sick. They raised the dead. They cast demons. They raised the dead. Mm -hmm. They cast demons out. Mm -hmm. Peter would be walking along and there'd be somebody that Peter didn't even see Mm -hmm. who looked and they were like, "That's, that's that man. He was a disciple of Jesus. And Peter's shadow would pass over them and they would be healed Mm -hmm. without Peter even having anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. And it's not that Peter had any power in him. It was they were that connected with their Savior. Mm -hmm. That's promised to us too, right? Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, the pour out of the 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 Spirit. That's right. These miracles you will do and even more. More. Mm -hmm. And all the miracles really do is... They act as a, a catalyst for people to receive the message. Amen. That's, it's really the message that's important that they were. That's right. And mm-hmm. that we're to be preaching, you know, because mm-hmm. we know in the end of time, Satan will also use miracles. That's to right. Uplift or support, bolster his work and say, mm-hmm. see, I, I, there's miracles, therefore it must be true. Mm-hmm. But that's really the difference between God's work and Satan's work. Amen. Is, you know, God's work is true regardless. His message is true Amen. regardless, and it doesn't need a miracle to bolster it. So if you use a miracle as a barometer, you know you can be led astray by a miracle. Yeah, the miracle is led astray by the truth. The miracle is not to be the test of whether it's mm-hmm. truth or error. Well, right. look at the Pharisees. I mean, they saw Lazarus being raised. They saw all of these miracles play out, and I mean, they called him, you know, by the power of Beelzebub, you're doing this. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily the visual of seeing this you know, amazing thing happened, that didn't convert their heart. So, Do you you know what's funny? And I'm glad you brought this up, Keith. 
It's the message that matters. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the message is? It says the gospel of the kingdom. The Type that phrase in on a, a search in the Bible. How many times do you see the word gospel of the kingdom? Mm -hmm. It's over and over and over again through the entire New Testament. The word gospel means glad tidings of the kingdom. We saw what the word kingdom means, mm -hmm. the sovereign reign of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's the glad tidings that Christ reigns. Mm -hmm. When they went into the world and told people, look, why are you over there? Well, I've been a whore my whole life. I've been a prostitute. Jesus forgave you. He bore your sins in his own body upon the tree. If you're willing to believe on him, you can stand up today and be free and clean. Again, no marks, no sin, it's gone. Blotted out forever. That's what turns the world upside down. And you know, if you go to Revelation, um, let me find this real quick. It's Revelation chapter 14. It actually talks about the three angels' messages. Yeah, Revelation 14 verse 6. The first angel, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, the glad tidings to proclaim to them that dwell on the earth. The gospel is what Christ did. Listen to what 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm. You see that word right there? Knowledge? Mm -hmm. It's knowing. Mm -hmm. That word actually means knowing. Mm -hmm. He has shown in our hearts to give us the light, the revealing of the knowing of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Christ knew His Father so much, His face glowed. Mm -hmm. God was in Him. Mm -hmm. And you remember where's that, that it says, um, this is life eternal that they might know Thee. Mm -hmm. He's the only true God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's what God wants. He wants us to accept what Christ has done on Calvary mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean, okay, I'm going to keep living in sin. It's like what Paul says. How can we that are dead to sin continue to live in that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we've got to know that we died. Amen. That's Amen. Right. Wow. Wow. Was, you know what? This is exciting. <laughs> yeah. And and the next the next part will we go into the kingdom of darkness. And I hate I hate to spoil it for the devil, but we're going to show the darkness, but it's got even more light. Right. Yeah, I like that we <laughs> focused on the light today. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Beautiful. So we kind of started out talking about, or I was asking this question about, you know, um, the voices in your head, you know, and this is why, just to kind of bring it full circle, this is why it's important that this is what we put in our head. Amen. Yeah. So this Amen. is the voice that we'll hear, you know, Jesus said, this is the way walk you in it. Um, this is what needs to be in our minds. And so when this comes to mind, we know that that is truth and that we're safe in obeying that. Other things, not so sure about. That's right. But, mm -hmm. So like we said in the beginning, if you want to if you want to know if you're getting uh, the right messages, you have to get them from the right source. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm glad Keith brought that up too, because if this, this is called the bread of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If this is what I'm eating, I mean, like if every day, if I'm not doing this as a ritual, but I'm doing this because I want to know what the promises are. Mm -hmm. If we hide His Word in our heart, mm -hmm. When an emergency comes, that's what will come back to the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those promises. Uh, talk about the blood. Uh, I know we were talking about the blood and everything. I just found very amazing in the Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Amen. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really... Amen. I mean, that's, I cannot wait, you know I mean? Amen. And what that verse, I think, really kind of means to me is that they were so in love with the truth that they would rather die than defile yeah. their God or go against what God had said. And Amen. that testimony was literally like what Jesus, I would rather die than to, to sin against God. You know, And you know, it's cool because we've already been given that promise. Let this mind be in us, which was, was in Christ. Christ. He was in willing Christ. to die rather than sin. And his mm -hmm. mind is in me mm -hmm. and in you and in you. Mm -hmm. Here's so, the thing. Do we believe it? And that's what faith comes by hearing and hearing yeah, by the word. word. Everything that God does points us back to the word. Right. So the more that you read it, and I encourage all of our, our brothers and sisters that are listening and watching, read God's word out loud. 
re when you're reading devotions, read it out loud and read your name into the promises. When you do that, I used to struggle because I used to always want to um, memorize Bible verses. I couldn't memorize them. I, mean, I just was no good at it. And when I started reading the Bible out loud, I never even had to try. It's like all of a sudden, while you're reading it out loud, God's Spirit is writing it on every fiber of your being. And I, I remember you telling me one time um, to to just add a couple of words to each one of the Ten Commandments as as, as if it was a promise. Yes. I will have no other gods before me. Amen. I will not have a graven image. I will, you know, uh, not take the Lord's name in vain. And, That's and right. It really kind of changes the context of that. But really, you can read the Ten Commandments as a promise that God That's is saying right. that my spirit will be in you, like what Ezekiel 36 says. Yes. And you will keep my judgments and my statutes. That's a promise. That is a promise. And it's by those promises that we are made partakers of His divine nature. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's great. Okay, so we're going to keep this going for two more hours, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is good. I love it. Good. Awesome. Well, it's a good time to plug uh, the Bible studies, right? Yeah. yeah so if you are um, out there in our listening audience and you want to, uh, you know, dig into the Word of God more, we have a series of videos that we had developed a couple of years ago called Video Bible Studies. We are ramping up on those again. And so... As you're watching, you should see notifications about that in the near future. We have short little videos, they're five minutes or less. Also written Bible studies that go along with them to help you get deeper into the Word of God. And even beyond that, we have our own Bible school. So we'll put that, a link to that Bible school in the description below in this video. And if you want to learn more about the Bible, the life of Jesus, even if you're a young person, we have studies designed specifically for that. So we invite you to look those up and Amen. become more engaged in the Word of God. So I hope this message has been a blessing for you, and we will see you next time. This has been LED Live. can speak with the spirits. The sins will destroy the commandments forever. A suspicious list of names prompts an investigation at a local school and concern from parents. The death note is derived from a Japanese animated show. The girl told authorities she got the idea from a Cartoon Network show. Mom, it's Mr. Satan. I recognize that voice anywhere. Visit our brothers at schoolforprofits.tv and watch From Babylon to America, which has over 5 million views on YouTube alone, and follow it up with America to Babylon. Check the description below for links to this and more.